what is exactly the spiritual rank of Al-Quds and its relevance to Muslims, although the patriarchs and the matriarchs that surround Al-Quds were not from the line of the Prophet wasallam, nor do we follow them. So mm-hmm. why is it that it uh, has a special rank with us? Because, well, as, as the Imam points out, I think number one on the list would be the fact that it is the it is our first Qibla and it is the the place of the Esra al-Mi'raj. This mm. is where the Meshav Allah was taken on that night journey and he went into the heavens and he was given the command to pray and he, led, and he met all the prophets and he led the prophets in prayer. And on top of that, when the Muslims came back later under under Sayyidina Omar al-Anhu, the Muslims established it as uh, Dar al-Islam and the mm. al-Qaf were set up. And we, always, we, wasn't, we have always acknowledged that al-Quds is the third of the Haramain. That's the actual expression they use in Arabic. That is the Haramain, a surely mm-hmm. thing, right? So it's, yeah. it's the third of the two holy sanctuaries, meaning ah, it's the third uh, holiest place in Islam. Yeah. This is our maqam. So what so what Imam Wahab Zuhaili shows from the text, always from 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 what we call the the the, uh, the religious perspective, obviously, yes, that this this is this is sacred to us. This is again this central Isra, and this is what Allah says right at the beginning. This is the land that Allah has blessed. All the land around it when he, when he took his slave from on the night journey from from Mesh al Aqsa of I mean, um, from from the Mesh in, in Mecca to, to the Mesh al Aqsa, which at that point was called right, it, it doesn't really exist at that point, right? But Allah is calling the farthest message. And the the key thing about that ayah is that our takeaway from that ayah is Allah is calling the farthest message, yeah, right? He's not calling it the far message, right? yes. If you're gonna say the farthest message, there must be three messages. At least that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. So that's a, that's a that's an indirect reference to a Meshit yeah. Nebui, mm. right? Ahead of yeah. time, obviously, ahead of time. Yeah. So that is all uh, very very clear to us. But what he also talks about is historically to refute some of these arguments that uh, the Zionists put forward, which is showing that the first people who settled there or built that area were the Canaanites, mm. right? And th- th- these these are people from the Arabian Peninsula. These are originally Arabic people. Mm. Um, so he says that the, the Arabs have uh, have been set, have settled there and have ruled that land for the vast majority of its history, uh, and then and that's that's all the way up to up to the point before Islam, right? Before mm. the Muslims arrived there, and then the Muslims ruled that for the majority of, of, of the fourteen hundred years, right? With the exception of uh, the Crusades between ten ninety nine and eleven eighty seven, the Gregorian calendar, and then what's happened recently with the, with the state of Israel, and the Muslims have always, and the Arabs before, but the Muslims especially, have always been very uh, magnanimous towards the inhabitants of of, of this uh, of this city and of the land itself, and towards the towards the Christians, towards the Jews, uh, they've always been tolerant and, and respectful and so forth. So, what Imam Muhammad Zuhaid is showing is that it is indeed it's the Muslims and the Arabs who have absolutely the most right to rule mm-hmm. this land, and, and these other people. Uh, have proven themselves to be completely and utterly unworthy. They were they were unworthy to begin with, from a historical perspective, from a religious perspective. Uh, but then we could also see from the absolute bloodshed and massacre and massacres and terrorism that, that these, these current people have inflicted upon uh, the local population that they they proved themselves unworthy. They were so it's the case yeah. of like they were they were unworthy to begin with, but now they've just gone ahead and proven themselves. Uh, it's uh, to be the, utterly the, and thoroughly unworthy of this position. The first uh, conquest was uh, French, was a French colonial project, and this is an Eastern European colonial project. So hmm. the the Crusaders are are French. Yeah, right. That's why they're called a or, French or, or yeah, Euro- European collectively, right? Because it's it's also yeah, collectively it's, it's, it's like Pope Pope Urban the Second. So, so that, that's from, from a papal bull from ten ninety five. Yeah. Which is then acted upon in 1099 when they arrive. Yeah. So they had uh, some Germans, some British, some Italians, but mainly mm-hmm. for, uh, Western Europeans, we could say. Mm-hmm. This time around, this is an Eastern European colony, essentially. These are yeah. Eastern Europeans, right? Yeah. Uh, or lineage Europeans. claim or not is irrelevant. You're Eastern Europeans. You look mm-hmm. like Eastern Europeans. You eat like Eastern Europeans. You dance like Eastern Europeans. Yeah, well, subhanAllah, this, this, this is what, again, I, I, I put that forward in my, in my introduction about the fact that this is what we're yeah. faced with. We're faced with a, a Western or, you know, settler colony. That's what this effectively is. It's, it's, a, it's yeah. a relic of the British Empire. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's also incredibly cynical that they would do this because 
this this whole project is a result of or is a consequence or of or an outcome of european anti-semitism yeah it's not it's not our issue yeah yeah <laughs> anti-semitism is not something that we, we we've never had a problem with the jews living amongst our ranks right their problem has been that they they persecuted jews they did not allow jews to take up so many trades that's why jews got into banking that's mm -hmm. why jews had to go into in, into lending money and interest right and then uh people get into so much debt and then they say what do we do well god kick the jews out because that's their yep. that, that's their issue it's not a problem we have in the muslim world yeah so so what what it, what is very sad about it is is the fact that as that what's the the professor from iran who's been on on, on a lot of shows recently i think his name is uh Mirandi. he's making that muhammad Mirandi's making that point that um it's it's, it's like the, the arabs and the muslims are, made, are being made to pay for the sins of europe right, that's exactly what's happening yep uh, uh, yeah. there is no historical record of moroccan pogroms or egyptian mm -hmm. holocausts or syrian uh pogroms or anything like that uh if there was we would have already known it yeah now i know that we probably are gonna they probably make movies about it and try to look for some little piece of evidence but if it actually happened the world would know the historical record would have been there right mm -hmm. at any serious level so the way that it happened in Spain, in every European country, pogroms, holocausts, and expulsions, right? Yeah. So uh, that's their legacy. It's that's their legacy, legacy hundred percent. Yeah. What is the Muslims' yeah. responsibility towards Al Quds? Is it to visit it once in a lifetime? What is? Is there any Sharia related to Muslims and Al Quds? Well, the, the position, the position of Al Quds, again, like I said, like I said before, is that that, that whole land is supposed to be the Darul Islam, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the basic position of the Fuqaha is that this this is called what's called in the Fir al Am. This is a land that is under attack. It's under attack. And it's under occupation, and it needs it needs to be liberated. So th th so those who are there on the front lines, they 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 fight back and they resist. And those who are further away, they do what they can. And those further away, they do what they can. And that's in terms of, of course, of uh, of sending aid, of sending food and clothing and all these kinds of things and supporting these people so the people the people in the west bank the people in Gaza, they're kind of they're at the forefront of this they're at the forefront of this of this struggle and this that that's what the uh responsibility is and again if you're able to visit it visit it because it, it should not be neglected yeah right if you have the chance to go you have the chance to go, to go there because again your, your prayer is worth 500 times the reward um and it al quds is al quds i don't think i need to expound on that what what does sheikh uh, al buti and sheikh wahab al zuhaili think of the fatwa given that muslims should boycott al quds and entering into philistine so long as the israelis rule it 